Happening right now, giving season is in full swing across the triad. We're not talking about the stuff under the tree. Giving back to the community over the holidays is what we're focusing on. That can mean money, food, or even a blood donation. And today we want to highlight all the ways you can help our neighbors in the triad. And of course, we're going to start right here at the WFMY News 2 Holiday Blood Drive. We've been here all day getting donations from folks, and you can see our leaderboard here, and it's just going to continue. You know, so often we tell you uh, what it means to give blood and how it affects our community, but I don't want you to hear it from me. I want you to hear it from someone in the community that has been touched by that. John Cornett is here, and you became a first-time blood donor this year. Yes, correct. And you have a connection. Tell me about your son, Ryan. Yes, uh, my son, Ryan, and his brother, Evan, were uh, both very early born, 24-weekers. Uh, Evan passed away after three days, and uh, Ryan lived to be four years old. But uh, during their time, they both had many uh, blood transfusions. Uh, Ryan got over 20 blood transfusions during his time at the NICU. And, um, each and every time it was at an urgent time and I, I just can't thank people like the people behind me right now enough for giving the gift of life because every day that I had with him was because of people like the ones behind me. Yeah, it allowed him to spend more time with you and your Absolutely. wife. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. This became your first year that you donated blood. Yes. For folks that are thinking to themselves, I don't know that I can do this. I, I loved hearing that story. I do want to help, but I'm a little apprehensive. What would you say about your experience? I was right there with the folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a fan of needles like probably mo most people out there. I was always scared of the donation process. Uh, and then, you know, I put my boys first, thought about them. Uh, and then when I sat down in that chair, it, it, it's not painful. It, it's quick. It's easy. And you think about the lives that, that you're saving, whether it's the little kids in the NICU or, or an adult or, or whatever, that, and it, it just means a whole lot. And now that you've given blood once, you will do it again. Absolutely, absolutely, in memory of my boys. Mm -hmm. And so for folks that are wondering, does it really touch my neighbors? Your answer is absolutely it Absolutely, does. it touches your neighbors right here in uh, Greensboro, Burlington, Winston-Salem, right here in this area. All right, thank you, John, so much for coming down here. We appreciate it. Um, thank you for telling your story and letting us know how our community was able to help your family thank as you. well. Hey, you know, guys, this is one of those truly priceless gifts, the gift of life and the gift of time with others that are loved ones. So we just want to make sure that you come to the Holiday Blood Drive tonight by 7 or you make an appointment right now to make that blood donation. Ben? And if you can't make it out there, there are a bunch of other ways to donate during the holidays. For example, the United Way of Greater Greensboro is holding their holiday handbag drive right now. They collect bags all month long and they're going to auction them off in February. The money makes a big impact. And some have shown up and told their story of how we have helped bring them out of poverty or, or, or their children. And we, you know, we've had people that we, we assist through college you know, getting their GED and then assisting with classes online. Um, there, there's a host of solutions that, that we're able to do because of the monies that we raise at this event. You can drop off bags Monday through Friday if you want to donate. And if you really want to bring light to our community, how about buying one of those Greensboro famous Christmas light balls? A Greensboro teenager helps keep this tradition alive each year while giving back. Cooper Dunning has made Christmas balls for the past three years and sells them. The money goes to benefit the Green for Greens Fund. It helps double SNAP and EBT money at a local farmer's market. Cooper says he's proud to know he's helping people who need it. But it directly impacts my community, which, which has given me so much. They've always supported me, so I was like, I got to give it back to them. We've got a link on our website where you can help out his cause. And the Salvation Army continues to make sure kids feel special and have a present to open this year. The organization hands out gifts to Angel Tree recipients. The effort began in Winston-Salem yesterday and serves about 2,500 kids in our area and even more children nationwide. Many of those donated gifts coming from other children. Teresa Woodward caught up with a Dallas teenager who was an inspiration for us all. A U-Haul truck is Santa's sleigh. You're going all the way back where those people are. 
I'm gonna point where your back end needs to go, okay? And the guiding force is a guardian angel. Sorry about the delay. We're here now, though. They unload gift after gift and bag after bag until inside a Salvation Army warehouse in Dallas, there's a mountain of generosity. It's a big mountain. Built by a 17-year-old kid. It's one kid who had a spark and ignited a community. Charlie Borochek was six when his parents bought Christmas for an angel on the Salvation Army Angel Tree. I have started a nonprofit, Charlie's Angels. And he said, wait, why won't their parents buy it for him? And I said, because there's some kids that they can't. And he, I remember his face. He could not even grasp that. My angels are very thankful for what I got them. He did extra chores and adopted two angels on his own. Ugh. At seven, my goal is $300 for three angels. Thank you all. Charlie's Angels was born. Ugh. Year after year, he does hard labor all summer. I wash a lot of cars, mow a lot of lawns. If there's any jobs that you could have me do for you. Bring everything over here. He asks family and friends for donations. Now his classmates help out too. <laughs> The same little boy who was desperate to raise $300. I gotta get it together. <laughs> just raised 70,000. Okay. He bought Christmas for 700 children. Oh, save of the year. From a child who received Angel Tree as a child, that was me. Oh. I wanna thank you. You still see that six year old. I do. And I think that's what's the most touching about it. He's never lost that spirit. <sighs> The feeling that I get on Christmas morning of imagining the happiness on countless kids' faces, I can't even tell you how it feels. It's just like overwhelming. Tired. <laughs> this one kid has given gifts to more than 1,100 kids in the last 11 years. These kids are so lucky to have. Charlie is off to college next year, so he'd planned for this to be his final year, but. It would be a disservice to stop now. It's just not an option. There's more work to do. I'm gonna take the last load. For Charlie, guardian angel, to Texas kids. It's all he can think about. In Dallas. Yes, I am that same little boy. I'm Teresa Woodard. If only we could all be a little more like Charlie. You know, it's not just the Salvation Army. Ward Black Law teamed up with the U.S. Marines for their annual toy drive this year. The program has run for more than a decade. The drive collected 24,000 toys last year. Ward Law says they hope to reach 30,000 this, 30, this year. Now, they are happy they can make a difference each year, and they're happy you want to be part of it. You know, one of the best parts of the triad is that we all come together to help each other. The holidays always highlight people giving back, but it really goes on year-round. We love hearing your unique ideas for helping out. Let us know what you're doing so we can continue to highlight your good work.